We're into module two of our JIRA basics course and in module two we're going to start looking at JIRA projects. If you remember in module one we looked at installing JIRA and the fundamental concepts of JIRA issues and in future modules we'll look at labels and priorities, workflows, dashboards and, and searching for issues etc. But in this module what we want to do is focus on JIRA projects, the concepts of projects, how to use those projects and how to create them. So first up then, what is a project? Well, what you need to understand is that as you create more and more issues within JIRA and you start to build up significant repositories of issues, so thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, you need a way to categorize and organize those issues. And the simplest way to do this is a project. You create a project in JIRA and that is just a collection of issues. And one issue in JIRA can relate to just one project in JIRA. So it's a one project to many issues relationship. What those individual projects represent though is up to you and typically it might be a product or a, a system within your organization that you're working on. So you may have one project in JIRA for a particular software development project and you may create a second project in JIRA for a completely different software development project. And the issues that you create, if they relate to one software project, they go in that particular JIRA project and vice versa for the other project. The important concept to remember though is that one JIRA issue can only reside in one project. If you have a similar issue or the same issue you want to reside in multiple projects, then you need to clone it or create copies of that issue. And we'll come on and talk about ways in which you can approach that in more detail in future modules. For now though, it's just one issue in one project. Let's take a look at this in JIRA then and see how this is represented in JIRA. So we've already created a number of issues and you'll see that when we're viewing that list of issues and in particular issues that we have our projects drop down at the top here. And from here, we can see the current project we've selected. We can see some recent projects we've been looking at and we can click on the view all projects to see all of the projects that are currently defined within JIRA. And what we'll see here is that we have a couple of projects called Acme Accounting, Acme Delivery Systems, Project 1, Project 2, etc. And if we click on these projects and drill down, we'll see all of the related issues that are located within that project. So these are all of the issues related to Acme Accounting System and you can see all of those issues listed in the left hand side. And we can see the path to those individual issues defined by the project name slash unique identifier for the issue. And if we click on the view all issues and filters, JIRA will display the filter criteria that have been applied to list all of these issues related just to this project. And you can see the project, the Acme Accounting System, has a project identifier AAS, and this filter that's applied is specifically to show our Acme Accounting System issues. Let's have a look in detail then at how we can create new projects and assign new issues to those projects. Let's go through creating a new project then. You'll need administrator rights and privileges for this. However, if you set your system up as we described in module one, then you'll have automatically set up the correct privileges to create projects. It's not difficult to find the create projects option in the drop down for projects, create project. And Jira then presents us with some templates that we can create our projects from. Those templates contain things like statuses for issues, workflow, custom fields. But for the purpose of our setup, we're just going to go with a project management Jira template. That template gives us a very simple workflow to do in progress and done and gives us a couple of issue types of just task and subtask. When we collect the select button, we're asked for the project name and a key for that project. So the project name in this example, Acme HR system, and Jira automatically comes up with a key. And this is the key that prefixes all of the issues that will be created within the project. So in this example, AHS, and it's usually best to stick to three or four characters 
and I'd avoid using numeric numbers in that key. Click Submit. Jira creates the project. And in that project, we have, unsurprisingly, no issues at this point. We can quickly create our first issue within this project. Create issue. Let me HR issue one. Some description. And a priority value. Maybe we'll set this one to highest and click create. So we've created one issue in our project. That issue will be given a unique ID based on the key that the project was given when we created it, which was AHS. And when we view this issue, you can see the path for the issue is based on the project name and then that unique identifier for the issue, AHS-1. So remember that a project is just a bucket for a group of related issues. We can select the project we want to view and work in from the drop down. And once we've selected that project, we get a summary of the issues and a list of the issues associated with that project when we click on the issues button on the left hand side. This gives us then some pre-configured search filters that will show a list of the issues and we can see that filter criteria when we click on view issues and filters. And from here we can see we're viewing issues for our AHS project and it's automatically selected the issues that are unresolved or haven't been dealt with yet and it orders them by priority and when they were last updated. Once we've clicked on that, you can also see there's some other pre-configured filters over here. So we could look at our done, open and all issues. And if we go back to our list of open issues with our navigation panel on the left hand side, we can see we have another couple of options available to us on this project view. So we could look at the project summary, which at the moment just shows us who the project lead is, the key, and the activity today, we haven't configured any dashboards or widgets yet. And we can look at some reports and configure those reports in the report area. And at the bottom, we have the option to look at the project settings. And from here, we can see things like the type issue types that we have configured in here, the workflow that's set up, um, versions and components and roles, which we'll, we'll talk about in subsequent modules. Going back to our list of issues then, we can continue to create new issues in this project or modify and update existing issues in the project. So I mentioned at the beginning then that there's a many to one relationship between issues and projects. Many issues can reside in one project. And if you want an issue to reside in multiple projects, you have a couple of options. You can clone that issue, so you have two instances of it, one in each project, or if that issue is no longer relevant to a project, you can move it to a new project. So those two options then. From the more drop down on the issue, we can select clone. And it's best to clone issues when you want to track a similar piece of work that's related to two different projects. And it's important to remember that those different instances of the issues enable you then to track different statuses of that issue within the different projects. So we'll call this clone Acme HR issue one. And if we create, create, we'll see that the issue is cloned. And from here, we can then move that issue to a new project. So we can select on the drop down here. Acme delivery system. We can change the issue type if we need to. Click next. Update the priority. Next again. And then finally, we get a summary of the, the move action we're going to take, the original value, new value. Click move and Jira will move that issue from one project to another project. And you can see here that that's confirmed because we have the Acme delivery system in the path for the issue. It has its unique ID, which is now ADS, which is the key for that particular Acme delivery system project and the unique identifier six. You'll also see in the history 
for the issue, a record of that clone action that took place where it was copied from the Acme HR system and cloned into or moved into the Acme delivery system. So at this point Jira has automatically moved us into working with the Acme delivery system project and again we can click on the drop down for projects and we can move back to the Acme HR system and we can see our original project along with the one issue that we cloned and moved into the second project. So in summary then, a project is just a way of grouping our issues. Keep in mind that Jira allows us to set access rights and user privileges to different projects for different users. And you might want a set of users to only have access to one project and not allow them to view issues in another. And all of that we'll look at and configure in a subsequent module when we look at project administration. That brings us to the end of our Jira Basics Module 2, where we looked at projects. Looking forward to going through Module 3 with you, where we'll look at workflow and issue status values.